Let's do this problem. It says, uh, shown are three amino acids written in their uh, condensed structures. Draw out the Lewis structures and identify if any are chiral. Okay, so um, remember what chiral means. That means to rotate plane polarized light. But, and um, when we're looking at structures, what we're going to do um, to figure out if a molecule is chiral, we're going to be looking for, um, specifically for you guys, um, we're going to be looking for a carbon atom that has four different groups attached to it, okay? So if those groups are different in any way, then we'll say, yes, they are different, okay? So um, it's very difficult, especially for um, introductory organic students to look at these condensed structures and identify whether a carbon has four different groups on it. So what I would recommend you do, and just like the problem asks you to do, is take these condensed structures and expand them to their Lewis structures, okay? So let's do that first. Um, so this one, we've got CH3, and then that's bonded to C H and an NH2, like that, okay, if you're cool with doing that one, okay. And remember this COOH, that's a very common organic functional group, so get um, used to how to draw it. It's C with the double bond O, like that, okay. And I'm just going to draw in the lone pairs just to remind you, remind you all. That that's where they go. Okay, is everybody, are the two of you okay with this one? Okay, wonderful. Not being too talkative today. Okay, so let's try this one. Um, you see the COOH? We'll start there. Okay, everybody okay with that? So now we're going to connect that. Remember, carbon has to make four bonds, okay? So this carbon has two hydrogens attached to it. It's attached to that COOH and has a, that uh, amine group on it, okay? So we've got it. C, H, H, N, N, H, 2, like that, okay? And I'm going to put the lone pair. So are you okay with that one? And again, these yeah. condensed structures, sometimes they look weird. So you gotta be kind of careful as to what you're drawing. You wanna remember, like, uh, carbon wants to make four bonds, nitrogen wants to make three bonds, um, hydrogen wants to make one bond, oxygen wants to make two bonds, okay? Um, and then let's draw this one out here. So um, we'll start with that COOH again, the carboxylic acid functionality. Okay. That's attached to the CH there, which is also attached to the NH2 down there. That CH is attached to this CH2 here. Do you see that? Okay, so. It is kind of weird for intro organic students sometimes to do this. So O, and then I'll just put that. And if I wanted to, I could expand these amine groups. In fact, let's do that since we've expanded everything else. Because that really does show those nitrogens making the three bonds, if you were ever having any trouble seeing that. Okay. Does that make more sense, or does that muck, murky up the waters? Hopefully it is. Okay, so what did we say? Remember, chiral means rotates plane polarized light, but for when we're looking at the structures, we're looking for carbons that have four different groups on them. Okay? So, here, let's look at the carbon atoms. Well, there's only the two carbon atoms, right? 
the only one has four things bonded to it. So the only one we really would be interested in looking at is this one. And hopefully you can see right away that it's bonded to two hydrogens. So this molecule is not chiral. In fact, we would call it a chiral. Okay. So let's go to this one over here. Again, the carboxylic acid, carbon, you don't have to worry about, okay? We can look over here at this methyl carbon. Hopefully you see three hydrogens attached to it. Not, we don't have to worry about it. It's not a stereocenter, okay? But then we look at this middle carbon here, right? So, in fact, that is a stereocenter, and it makes this um, molecule chiral. In fact, what we like to do is to label stereocenters with a little asterisk there. This molecule is chiral, and I'm going to show you the four things that it's attached to, okay? So, uh, this carbon is attached to a hydrogen, okay? Which, of course, is different than an NH2, right? Is everybody okay with that? And then both NH2 and hydrogen are different than COOH, right? So that's three different groups. And all three of those, COOH, H, and NH2 are different than CH3, okay? So it's the whole group, okay? It doesn't matter that this is a carbon and this is a carbon, okay? So it's that whole group. Yeah, I know, that's what throws introductory students off, okay? So it's not just the next atom it's attached to, it's that whole thing, okay? So let's try it here. Um, you tell me, is this carbon uh, stereocenter? No. No, why not? It has four bonds, but it's bonded to two hydrogens. Very good, yes, it does have four bonds, but it has two hydrogens bonded to it, right? So it's not a stereocenter. What about this carbon here? No. Nah, never. Carboxylic acid, never. Okay? So whenever you got that double bond, you know, it's not bonded to four different things, so it can't be. So the only one we'd be interested in is this one here, right? So is this, this carbon bonded to the four different um, groups? Yeah. yeah, NH2 is different than H, clearly, which they're both different than COOH, and all three of those are different than CH2OH. Is that okay? So we would label that as a stereocenter there, and we would say this is questions on this one? Would it make a difference like on that CH2OH if you put the one H on top and one at the bottom and the OH to the side? Uh, does, it doesn't, doesn't matter, matter. yeah. Right. It doesn't matter how you draw them as long as they're bonded um, to the same carbon, you know, then if there's two H's or something like that, you're never going to have a stereocenter, okay? Remember in those other problems when we were, we built the uh, molecule and we showed we can rotate around the single bond. So it doesn't matter which one of those hydrogen you replace, they're equivalent. Okay, any other questions on this one? Okay, wonderful. Good job, guys.